Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Mermaid Legend, a Japanese drama, thriller, horror movie from 1984 that was directed by Toshiharu Ikeidu, uh, the man who would go on to direct Evil Dead Trap in 1988, four years later. Now the following plot synopsis was paraphrased from the website Bloody Pit of Horror. Young newlyweds, Migiwa, played by Mari Shia, uh, Shirato, and Keizuke, played by Jun Eito, are independently employed fishers, and their primitive method involves Migiwa being tied to a rope, holding a weight, and going deep into the ocean floor to look for seafood. Their livelihood, and the livelihood of many others in the area, is threatened by wealthy industrialists, led by the greedy, soulless uh, Mr. Miyamoto. Now, Miyamoto is dead set on acquiring all of the land under the pretense of building an amusement park there. However, he actually has other plans to drive out the locals and build a nuclear power plant. So he's managed to buy off the mayor, the chairman of the fishing association, and other uh, businesses. And he also has the majority of the local law enforcement in his pocket. And for those who refuse to give in, some mysterious accidents occur, resulting in their deaths starting with one of the boats exploding and killing a man late one night, a crime that Keisuke witnesses. So, first of all, <clears throat> there are some beautiful shots to enjoy in this film. Many shots of the ocean, both at surface level and underwater. Some very neat underwater fishing scenes early on with the, the lady diving down, you know, in like the blue seas and, you know, picking up... Uh, Abalone, I think she's uh, attempting to acquire down there, which is quite expensive, but also quite tasty. So if you could get a bunch of those, you can make some. You can make some cash for sure. In any case, the music supplements the visuals by contributing a very tranquil soundscape during those underwater fishing scenes. And then the film kind of begins with some gentlemen at a nightclub who talk about how they do not want to sell their land, but the ocean has been bad for business for a while now so they're running out of options so there's like a financial and corporate subtext here that's set up immediately there's a little bit of commentary about the exploitative tactics of big business um, but that's more of like again like a subtext they don't talk about it or bash you over the head with it really that much the story is rather simple overall uh, it eventually morphs into a revenge tale and that kind of rises to the top during the second half and you know, the, our protagonists accomplish this goal fairly easily since the villains are pretty open and non-secretive with their evil deeds. But despite the film's simplicity, there, it feels like a high-quality film throughout, with the final act contributing an undercurrent of supernaturalism as well, and that definitely adds some uniqueness to everything. You need to keep that in mind when going into the final act and when the conclusion presents itself because it plays out in a somewhat unrealistic way, but it fits within the context of the movie, and I believe it was appropriately set up. I know I'm trying to be vague in my description here, but you'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about after you finish watching the film. Now, one criticism I have is that the husband character is not very likable. You know, he's not a bad guy or anything, but he, he kind of whines a lot and uh, gets pissed drunk a bit too often. But thankfully, the lead actress does a nice job, and her character is far more likable. She has some emotional moments that are convincingly performed, and she is the main character of the film, so the, I think that was a good choice. The middle act of the film is a little bit slow, and it transitions, as I said, into like a revenge plot, but do not let the deliberate pacing of this film fool you, because Mermaid Legend has some bite to it. Viewer beware of a few sex scenes, one of which is a little bit disturbing, and an escalating level of graphic bloody violence as the story crescendos to its conclusion. Uh, the final act features one of the crazier depictions of murder that I've seen in a Japanese film. And when it happens, you just kind of sit there in like disbelief when it's happening. So this movie has some, has some really good scenes, but they get pretty intense. And the ending of the movie, like the very end, has a bit of a melancholy feel to it a little bit of sadness, and that's also paralleled by the real-life events of the director of this film, who passed away under dubious circumstances near the filming location of the movie. 
Like, this film was shot in 84, and I think he passed away in 2010, right near the area where this film was shot. And it was reported that he suffered a little bit of uh, depression at the time, so we could probably assume what happened there, right? But, uh, you know, definitely a sad situation. And I've always been a fan of Toshiharu Ikeda. Evil Dead Trap is like the quintessential Japanese slasher movie, it could be argued. And uh, I think Mermaid Legend, Legend is like pound for bound, pound his best movie overall. And even some of his weaker titles that are available I've enjoyed over the years. So yeah, it was nice that he at least gave us a nice little, uh, I guess, a handful of memorable and entertaining horror and thriller films to enjoy over the years. But Mermaid Legend is a well-made, kind of unique movie. You know, you have a solid lead performance that's legitimate, some exploitative elements with the sex and the violence, but also it's beautifully shot, and there's a sprinkling of supernaturalism at points, and then a possible parallel with the fate of the director in real life. So all of this stuff, added to the fact that it's a standout title from the Japanese film industry from the 1980s, I have to strongly recommend it, because I think it's a really cool movie. Uh, it should be more well-known, if only because it's memorable, and it really needs uh, an international Blu-ray release very badly, which it has not received. However, the Japanese Blu-ray has a very nice transfer, as they typically do. It does not have English subtitles, but it's not a big problem, because the story is simplistic enough and easy to follow. I do have the Japanese Blu-ray, as well as an old DVD that was probably a bootleg I got off of eBay that did have English subtitles, but you can't find that anymore. Almost impossible to find streaming, but I will say this. The Japanese Blu-ray is a very nice option because of some of the reasons I mentioned, and it's reasonably priced on Yes Asia, the website. It's only like 20 bucks, which for a Japanese Blu-ray is like dirt freaking cheap. So if you want to give this movie a shot, maybe you have a little bit of extra spending money for the holidays, you know, check it out. I think it's worth buying the Blu-ray and giving it a shot. And as always, folks, I'll see you next time.